Larry, it's good to see you again. Thank you for being here today. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it very much. So I'd like to get right to the debate over what is really taking place between these trade talks between the United States and China. Did the president ask the cabinet to draw up a possible deal with China? No, not specifically. Um, look, um, there's no massive uh, movement uh, to, to deal with trade. We, we have already put out asks to China with respect to trade. Uh, we can go through that, technology and uh, tariffs and so forth and so on. Uh, I spoke to Ambassador Bob Lighthizer this morning. I mean, we're doing a normal, routine uh, run-through of things that we've already put together and normal preparation, okay? There's no mass movement. There's no huge thing. We're not on the, on the cusp of a deal. As the president said, you know, we'd like to talk to them about it, but uh, they may not be ready. I mean, that's been the unsatisfactory response from China. Now, the phone call between the two presidents yesterday was good, positive, uh, positive vibes, if you will, and trade will be on the agenda at the G20. That was uh, kind of up in the air, but it will be on the G20. And we will prepare, as we always do, USTR, Commerce, NEC, Treasury. We, we would have done it anyway, but uh, sure, we're going to do it. Is the meeting between the two presidents definite? Yes, I would say at this stage it is definite, absolutely. And as I mentioned, Scott, um, what also is definite now is there will be a trade discussion. I mean, they're going to talk about a lot of things, you know, security, North Korea, and so forth and so on. We didn't know if we'd get a trade discussion. Uh, as I said before, they've disappointed us. Their responses to our asks have been unsatisfactory. But now there will be a trade discussion in Argentina, yes. D does that mean that the Chinese have come to the table with something that you uh, and others in the administration have deemed to be uh, acceptable? Uh, because that was the commentary from you and others over the last many weeks, that the Chinese hadn't come with anything that you were even willing to uh, entertain. Does this say that they have? Well, haven't seen it yet. I mean, this was... Um a phone call um, and, you know, a pleasant, positive phone call. But no, I, we haven't seen anything from the Chinese yet. Nothing. And as I said, our asks have been very clear. I mean, just to run through it, IP theft, right? Um, the issue of forced technology transfers, the issue of ownership, and, of course, the issue of tariffs and non-tariff barriers for agriculture, industrial supplies and whatnot. Cyberspace, cyber hacking. Anyway, we put that on the table. It's still on the table. We have never had a response from China, and we don't have one today, even after yesterday's good phone call. Is there still a chance for, for additional tariffs against China, Larry? Well, the president has indicated that. It depends on how the talks go. It depends how trade relations go. Uh, he has said that um, he could pull the trigger on, um, I guess, about $265 billion. We don't know what the tariff rate might be. He said that. And, uh, you know, he's shaking things up. I think he's doing the right thing, Scott. I mean, unfair trading practices, illegal trading practices, you know I'm a free trader. But the fact is they're standing in the way, and their cyber hacking business is picking up speed. I mean, there's a new regulation that their police can actually cyber hack American companies in China and steal technology? That's insane. Anyway, the short answer is we have more to do if the president chooses to do it on tariffs, and we'll see. Maybe not, okay? You know, the flip side, to be optimistic, you know, I like to be optimistic, Scott. The flip side is if in the next bunch of months, going to, you know, way past the G20, in the next bunch of months, if trade talks really improve, and China begins to show that they will make significant reforms, the president has said in that case, China, uh, tariffs could be removed. But we haven't seen that yet. So the president said, and I'm quoting, eventually we are going to make a very reasonable deal with China. I can tell you they want to make it. Is that true? Do you believe that the Chinese want to make a deal? Well, I think the president's spirit is correct. And I think um, he's probably reinforced by the phone call yesterday. But, Scott, you know, I've been in this process. I mean, I was bar I barely in the job. Early April, we go to Beijing. 
our group, and I thought they wanted a deal. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Louis Hay and his people, um, I thought they were sincere. I think they're free market reformers, but nothing happened. And then they came to Washington, and nothing happened. And Wilbur Ross went over there again, and nothing happened. So I'm not as uh, optimistic as I once was. Hmm. I hope I'd be wrong. We just have to see, Scott. They've got to show us concrete responses to our asks. It's we haven't seen that yet. Interesting that you say you're not as optimistic as you as you once were. Are you more worried today, Larry, about the negative impact that t tariffs have already had on the economy? And I, I know I went down the list with you before during our last interview of the companies and the CEOs who have spoken out on this very issue. And that list has grown longer since we last visited with each other, Larry. Yeah, you're right, Scotty. Look, I my response here is 250,000 new jobs. It's an incredible number. And a 3.1% uh, wage rate year on year. And by the way, participation and employment ratios all went up. The American economy is booming. I think it's the biggest story of the year. Uh, my friends on the other side of the aisle said it would be impossible. It's happening. The tax cuts are kicking in. The deregulation is kicking in. We are in terrific shape. Our economy, frankly, is much stronger and in a much better upward trajectory than China's is. And I think that thought is not lost on either of the presidents. So look, we're in a boom. It's not a sugar high. Today's number should have uh, uh, assured people of that. And by the by, let me just put in a little Kudlow editorial. You've heard this before. Um, more people working successfully, earning higher wages for the first time in 20 years, is not inflationary. It's a good thing. And the expansion of this economy is coming from the supply side of the economy. The tax cuts and so forth are improving our potential to grow. You're, you're so laying, it looks terrific right now. You're laying out a case in which the Fed, the Fed should stay the course then. The Fed should hike in December and the Fed should stay the course next year, despite what the president has said publicly. Well, look, I don't want to comment on the Fed per se. The president has raised very important points. He's worried that they may raise rates too quickly and could choke off the economy. Uh, I'm reading a story uh, online in the Wall Street Journal, an interview, uh, Greg Ip interviewing Jay Powell's interesting story. Mr. Powell says he doesn't want to pull the trigger uh, rapidly. Okay, and Mr. Powell also said that low unemployment, 3.7 percent, is not inflationary. Good for him. So I think he and the president have the same goals. We want an expanded, long-term, non-inflationary recovery. So the Fed is independent. The president respects that independence. And we'll see what they do. But do you agree, though, with the president? Oh, I, look, I think, do I agree? I, I think I mean, he you're the top, a very You're the top economic point. advisor. Um, theoretically, he, he listens to your opinion on the economy more than anybody else's, Larry. Do you think that the Fed needs to go slower? Well, look, we, by the by, we got a lot of smart people in the administration. It's not just me. I appreciate the thought, but we have a great economics team. Look, um, I don't want to preach to the Fed. That's not my job. My advice to the president is simply this. We are in a non-inflationary economic boom. I don't want to see anything really change. For example, Scott, I don't want to see a, a new Congress that might raise taxes and undo the good that we've done, or might start raising regulations and undo the good that we have done, or try to stifle the energy boom that will make America energy dominant. We're growing at 3.5%. Uh, that's the fastest trend growth in a very long time. Um, I just want to stay the course on this. A lot of good things have happened. People said it would be impossible. They were wrong. It is happening. Let's just stay the course. But how are we in a non-inflationary economic boom, Larry, if we've, we've seen a number of companies, in fact, the Wall Street Journal had a story earlier in the week, of a long list of companies that have already raised their prices. That, in and of itself, is inflationary, isn't it? No, it's not. I mean, look, specific companies in specific sectors, that's great. When you look at Prices, like the Fed's measure, um, PCE deflator, personal consumption deflator, I think they're measuring, I'll probably get this wrong, but I think they're measuring something like two or 3,000 prices. 
And I will say also my long-held view, inflation is a monetary phenomenon, and you'd probably see it best if the dollar was sinking or if gold commodities were roaring. They're not. The dollar is firm. Gold commodities are soft. I don't see any inflation in the big picture. Wage increases are fabulous. Working force has not seen this in 20 years. They says good for them. They deserve it. They haven't really seen a big increase in almost 20 years on a sustained basis. And productivity is starting to rise. 1.4% year on year. It'll go higher because the tax cuts for business is promoting business investment which gives more capital per worker, which will raise their productivity. So that's not inflationary. This is coming from the supply side of the economy, Scott. This is not a sugar high. Understand, this is not the government pumping in spending. This is a different approach to economic growth. A rapidly rising deficit, though, is inflationary. You would agree to that, wouldn't you? Uh, not particularly, no. I don't think the link between deficits and inflation. Again, I repeat, inflation is a monetary phenomenon. On the other hand, Scott, you will see the deficit coming down. Actually, it was rather high this past year, but came in $100 billion lower than the CBO expected. So here's my take. The combination of rapid economic growth and spending restraint, we're going to have a very tough budget. Uh, the president has, as you may know, ordered my, uh, a 5% drop across the board in domestic accounts. You'll see... Faster growth, which will add enormously to GDP, and then we'll see spending cuts. Every 1% increase in government, uh, in economic growth. So the CBO is about 2. We're at about 3. It's coming in over 3. That 1% is worth mm, 3 to $3.5 trillion over 10 years, lower deficits. And that's what the pattern is going to be as our plan works out. How are you going to do that middle class tax cut that the president said was coming uh, even before the midterms, Larry? But that's on Tuesday. So obviously we don't expect that to happen. But how are you going to pay for those? Well, we're looking at everything. A lot of different options. The best way, how to mix it up with spending cuts, how to fit it into the economic program. Uh, middle class uh, got a large tax cut in the past bill, as did business. The president would like to see more. I happen to agree with him. There's more room for tax reform, for example. So we're looking at a lot of different options is, is, uh, that will be pro-growth and will not upset the fiscal story. Is a, is a middle class tax cut uh, on the table post midterm? Yes, absolutely. We had a joint statement with Kevin Brady, head of the Ways and Means Committee. Yes, of course, it's on the table with many other policy options, including spending cuts, including growth. I want to ask you another question. Uh, uh, I want you to react to a, a remark that you made, uh, I believe it was earlier in the week, about economic growth and discretionary spending and about bringing deficits down. Because I hear from a number of investors who are increasingly concerned about the size of the deficit and where the projections say, Larry, that it's going to be. You said, quote, I think we need 10 years or so of economic growth running at about 3% a year. That was at a Washington Post event, and that is way against the consensus. Now, I know you're going to come back with, I know, uh, you know, there were other people didn't think we could get to the growth level that we've gotten to now, but Larry, 10 years of economic growth of 3% or more to deal with this deficit? Do you really think that is possible? Well, look, I, I don't, that's a long that's your time. Statement. It's way in front of us. It is my statement, and by the way, I stand by it. Scott, I was really referring to the estimates. I just gave it to you. If you have 1% higher growth over a 10 year period, you get about $3.5 trillion lower deficit. Now, can we sustain this for 10 more years? I don't know. OK, I, I'm just going to say I don't know. Um, here's a question. Have we really been in a recovery? I mean, you've had 2 percent growth before President Trump took over. 2 percent growth. When I grew up on Wall Street as an economist in the Fed and so forth, that was called a growth recession. And there was no business investment trend. So here's my point. We are seeing massive business investment, capital goods and so forth along with the wage increases and the hiring. That would be a legitimate 
economic recovery, a legitimate economic recovery. So we'll see about the duration of it. You know, again, I refer to this. It's interesting. I just read it online. Greg Ip's interview with uh, Jay Powell. Uh, I'm, I don't remember Jay's exact words, but he basically said, let it go. You know, maybe not. Who knows? It could go on for a long time. Don't be so cynical, Scott. You've got to believe here. America's on the way back. We're uh, the hottest economy I, in the world. I'm not cynical. We're crushing, my, I'm not cynical. We're crushing it right now. I'm just, I'm just asking you to, to react and respond to some of the uh, statements that you've made yourself. Uh, that, that's all I'm doing. I'll, uh, I, I want to ask you. I, I stand by it. Okay. I want to ask I you. I stand by it. I want to ask you finally about, about the stock market. Uh, how closely have you and the president been watching what's taken place in the market? What do you think of the correction? Do you think the correction in the stock market's over? Um, I'm not going to give you a couple of forecast on that. Um, it's not my job now. Um, corrections come and go. You know that. Your panel knows that as well as anybody else. Sure, we look at it, but we don't, we're not obsessed with it. There's a lot of indicators about the economy, including today's 250,000 increase in jobs. Uh, Scotty, what I'm hearing from my sources on Wall Street, smart people, uh, profits are going to remain very strong. And I remember a former CNBC anchor who often said profits are the mother's milk of stock. Uh, do you remember that person? Uh, I can't I, I, hardly remember. I think remember. I'm, I'm looking at him right now. I, I, I know that man well. And, and, and profits are the, life, uh, the, blood, uh, 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 the bloodline for the economy. So um, I'm not going to give you a forecast. I'm just going to say things look awfully good, okay? Things look <laughs> awfully good. we got blue-collar people working. Uh, women in the labor force, Hispanics, African-Americans, low unemployment rates. Frankly, I've never seen anything like it. It reminds me of the 1980s. What was the story? Um, Washington Post, front page, above the fold a couple weeks ago, fastest blue-collar hiring since 1984 when I was a Reagan Cub Scout in OMB. So we're really ripping along here. Larry, I appreciate your time very much. Thank you for joining us here on CNBC. Thank you, Scott. The Halftime Report. You're we'll terrific. talk to you again soon. I appreciate it, too. All right. Thank you very much. Good to visit with you. Larry Kudlow, President's Top Economic Advisor.